the premium power plenum products that you see featured today in this episode of The Quiet Rifle were provided to me by Vladan Panovic, the Serbian superhero, the Sultan of Suave. I will link his channel in the description. There will also be his email address there so you can place any orders for anything you see that you might want in this video and also a link to his Facebook groups. So get in touch with him and get what you need. He contacted me via Facebook Messenger and said, Prostov Hoji, I like your video, fun, it's good, yeah? And I was like, oh, thanks, mate. Hey, you need power-up kit for your impact. Um, I'm getting about 930 feet per second with the King Heavy Mark IIs, which is pretty good. And uh, I do quite a bit of shooting on low power, so I don't know if I really need a power-up kit. No, no, power-up kit, not just for power. It gives you more shots per fill. It's good. You need. That does sound good. I make you a special power-up just for your gun. You will get titanium power plenum. I am special. Yes, very good. You're a man. You're the man. And that's how we got here to where we are today. So, not long after that conversation, packages arrived. So, um, it looks like he sent me two kits. So, we've got um, one Mark I impact kit. Mark I, as you can see on the uh, top there. And a whole bunch of O-rings and some lovely artwork. Pretty good, it's pretty good, I gotta say. <laughs> and some instructions. Um, uh, so let's separate it. We got uh, titanium plenum, titanium, mmm, juicy. That's definitely going on my gun. Um, a bunch of Delrin and uh, regular O rings to seal that particular plenum onto my gun. Very nice. Um, and in the Mark I kit, uh, you get a modified valve housing, um, and you can probably see it's been cut, so that's to accommodate the external plenum, um, because the plenum sits underneath the valve housing in the same hole that the valve, uh, that the gauge goes on, so if the bar is there, it uh, impedes the way that the air moves through the valve housing, so you have to... Um, remove that bottom bar um, and on my gun this won't fit in my gun because this is for a mark one impact and the mark one impact um, i believe is a 20 mil maybe a little bit bigger and the mark two impact i think is a 23 so there's a few little differences with it there's a um this valve housing uh and or the the valve seat rather which is in there um that can be removed and swapped out and I'll probably do that on this one, just for giggles, because he sent me a titanium valve seat as well, which is very good. Um, and I believe that in the Mark II impact, the valve seat is actually integral, so I don't think I can remove it. But we'll have another look at it and see. Maybe you can, maybe you can. Um, but yeah, this valve seat is for this valve housing. So we'll put that over there. That's going to go in... Um, my dad's Mark One Impact, so power up kit for dad, very good. Put the plenum over there, I believe that's an aluminium plenum that one. O-rings, O-rings, instructions, and you get um, some Delrin as well, Delrin uh, seals, so you can swap your C3 bumper out with one of these if you order these kits, which is a fantastic idea because they all eventually fail. Um, I've also got a, a barrel end with a, a ported transfer port, same as what you would do if you were doing a performance mod on a, uh, on like a high performance car air intake type of a deal. It's wider at the bottom and um, the air flows through it uh, smoother I guess is the best way that I could explain it. And we've got also a pellet probe and this pellet probe has been half mooned so that the air can flow through it a little smoother. As you can see there, the bottom of it's been sort of machined out. Very nice, handy. You can get a couple of extra feet per second with that one. Um, we've also got a hammer weight, slightly heavier hammer weight to cope with uh, the heavier um, amount of power that I guess we're gonna make. And that's about that. So parts that will be going into my impact uh, today 
will probably just be the plenum and the pellet probe, possibly the hammer weight, and possibly this badoba, the barrel end. It would be cool to have a um, ported barrel end on there. Um, and in the future, um, I may make some other changes as well, but um, for today, that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. But if you have ordered an FX power plenum, uh, the disassembly part of this video uh, will, will, will cover what you have to do to actually um, get that job done, get that install done, um, because it's basically the same thing, but um, the FX kit will have um, parts that you can just swap in and the, the modifications that I'm doing today, you probably won't have to do all the mods. You just have to um, watch the disassembly and then put the parts that you're upgrading back in instead of the parts that um, were in your gun in the first place. So it's going to be pretty simple. Much easier than you think it is. Much, much easier. So the first part of this install is safety, as always. So bust your gun out of the safe, open up the cocking handle, remove any magazines, make sure that the breech is clear, nothing down the tube, and decock the gun by holding the trigger and riding that cocking handle forwards. Second, um, skip over to the other side of the gun, move your hammer spring tension setting to minimum, and then remove the bottle. Once the bottle's off, um, fire off a couple of shots on that minimum setting until the regulator releases what air it's still holding and then you are completely degassed and safe and ready to rock. If you can't make noise um, and you don't want to fire off blank shots, you can also back out the pressure gauge for the regulator. Um, just be careful if you do that, just open it up a little bit, a couple of uh, threads until you hear it start to hiss and then once it stops hissing, then you can um, remove it completely and you should be completely degassed. Obviously you have to remove the bottle for that too. <coughs> Ooh. So you only need basic tools to do this job. Um, starting on the left hand side we've got a pair of uh, vice grips. Um, you can modify your vice grips by drilling a little hole in them, we'll cover that later on. Um, but then we've got a 300mm shifting spanner, an 11mm regular spanner, um, some allen keys, just grab your whole set. Um, you're going to be using two, two and a half, three and four millimeter allen keys, so have them on hand. Um, I'm just using this screwdriver because it's, it's just easier. Um, I have a special little thing full of different screwdriver bits that mimic the allen keys, so and that's a nice thing to have as well. And lastly but not least, your calipers, so that you can measure all the bits and make sure they're the same length when they go back in. Very simple, nothing expensive, probably get all of these tools for $20 if you went down to your local tool shop and bought them individually. The next piece of the puzzle that will make your life infinitely easier is having a nice clean workspace. So separate your products from your tools, have a nice sort of uh, soft surface with a bit of friction on it, like a tablecloth. I'm using this little piece of cloth here. Um, seems to do a good job of stopping bolts running away and, you know, O-rings rolling off the table and stuff like that because um, we're going to lay them all out as we take it apart so that we know exactly where everything went. So, let's start with the basics first. We will remove the barrel. Very simple, especially if you get the Allen key right. <laughs> so this is a 3mm Allen key. Pop him in the back, unscrew. Pop that grub screw up somewhere smart. Slide the barrel out. Lay the barrel down. Your next move is to remove the top rail. So there's two small screws at the back and one big screw at the front. I'm using a four millimeter Allen key for this. For the big one at the front that is. This one's a little bit tight usually. There we go. Back it right out. For the two smaller screws at the back of the rail, I'm using a two millimeter bit for my screwdriver, but you can also use a two mil hex wrench. I just prefer the screwdriver, it just feels easier to use. 
Back those bad boys out. Now, leave all of those screws inside the block there. That way, you won't have to figure out which ones go where, because they'll already be where they're supposed to be. Same size again, two millimeters for the cheek piece. There's uh, four bolts on this one. Once again, we're gonna back them out and we're gonna leave them in the actual unit so that we know that those exact bolts go back in that exact spot. Keeping the bolts in it, pop them aside. There we go. So before we go any further with disassembling the superstructure of the gun, we're gonna take the valve stem apart because once it's, it's just a little bit easier to do it with the gun intact. So we'll um, unscrew your valve adjuster. Remember to measure it before you do this if you intend to uh, return to a, a similar spot. But the, um, for me, putting a plenum upgrade on, you're gonna have to retune anyway. So yeah, not much point in measuring it. <laughs> There is an 11 millimeter spanner head. So we're gonna chuck the old 11 mil on that one, back it out a smidge. Shouldn't be too much on that one. And then place that in line with your little valve bumper. This next bit, you need some different tools. So we've got the old long nose vice grips and we're going to pull the valve stem out against the spring tension, clamp the vice grips over it, and then remove the, uh, the end of the valve stem. Just so that uh, when we come to take the rest of the gun apart, that front end of the valve stem doesn't hang up uh, on the inside of the gun there. When you are using your vice grips, uh, most, most of the, uh, the really smart switched on dudes, they drill a hole, in the uh, in between the jaws so that there is a nice round flat surface for them to grip onto um, and it doesn't it doesn't end up marking the the valve stem because uh, you don't want to scratch up that valve stem so I'm not going to do that I'm going to use leather I'm just going to whack a piece of leather on there and use that to the as my holding surface <laughs> Ooh. One of these days I'll get around to, to drilling the hole, but it won't be today. <laughs> Pop him out. Leather on. Yeah, just be gentle when you're putting it down. Make sure that you don't mark up the front of your gun as well. Nice and slow, nice and easy. Next, I'm gonna grab a very small Allen key. This is a, this is a one millimeter Allen key and I'm gonna use it to put it into the little tiny hole on the end of the valve stem and use that to get some leverage to start spinning it. Once we've got that off, set them aside, pop your little Delrin bumper off. If you've got, if you haven't upgraded your um, little C3 O-ring, this is an excellent time to do it. So throw the old one away or keep it as a spare if you must. And then, um, yeah, chuck a new Delrin one on. Delrin or Teflon, whatever uh, tickles your pickle and go on forwards from there, never look back. <laughs> Next step, grab the valve spring, uh, the valve stem rather, open up your vice grips, move me leather, and carefully let it go home again. There we go, wonderful. Now we're done with that, we're gonna remove the top rail. So this, this top plate here basically aligns the rest of the gun sort of with itself. So, we are going to pop all of these out. 
two mil once again. Same as last time, we want to um, make sure that we unscrew everything but leave it in, in the rail where you left it because there's three different lengths of screws alone inside this top plate alone. So um, it's not the end of the world if you, if you do sort of drop them all out and forget where they go because you screw them in and they just won't screw in any further and they'll be hanging out the top so you know to switch it with a shorter screw but at the same time you don't really want to be messing around with that you want to sort of just get the job done right the first time get back on the range as soon as you can alright so once you've done all 12 of those screws pull them up you can see there different lengths of screws hanging down and you've got two long ones on that front on that front block as well. So I'm going to put that little block back with those screws, lay it down carefully, keep all of my screws in the same holes. Next, we're going to remove this top piece, slide it back so that your pellet probe uh, slide it back so that your pellet probe clears the um, the block there and make sure that when you do um, remove this piece understand that it can swivel and it is threaded on both ends so one end should be loctited um, typically the forward end should be loctited and um, you you don't want to add or remove any extra length to that rod um, if you do uh, measure it when you put it back in, the distance between the, um, the back of the stock and this part, this flat part here of the um, pellet probe housing should be 45 millimeters. Double check that, but 99% sure it's 45 mil. So just make sure that you um, don't add or remove any, any threads and you should be right. So lay that one flat, carefully, carefully. The next step, what we can do is break apart the rear of the gun from the front of the gun by opening up this little plenum retention nut, loosening it off a bit. She's pretty tight. There we go. You can leave it in there. Careful. Remember the valve rod is in the valve stem is in here. So you don't want to bend that. Just carefully, carefully. And it's going to contain our hammer springs and all that other jazz. So carefully remove that. Lay them all down. So hammer, hammer weight, hammer spring should all come out the front and then we'll pop the front of it over yonder. This next piece we can just, mine's, mine's just hand tight so we'll undo that bit like so. Factory plenum, I believe factory plenum is 25 cc's for the Mark II impact and 20 for the Mark I impact. So there's no real need for us to take this apart any further. Um, and I believe if you purchase the FX Power Plenum, um, this is all one piece. So you just put your new one in there and off you go. So lovely. Okie dokie. So for this next piece, um, we want to get the uh, valve housing out. So we have to remove the pressure gauge that is um, 27 millimeters on the flat bit to flat bit. I'm just going to use a big 300 millimeter um, shifting spanner. So very gently because it is brass, soft, make sure that you get it to fit nicely and then carefully just crack the tension off it, then undo it by hand, put the gauge and the gauge cover off to one side, 
Now, to properly remove the valve housing, um, on the Mark II, um, you have to remove these four screws here that hold on the magazine base plate. Um, the base plate won't come free, but obviously the block is held onto it, so the, um, once you get them out, you can take the block off. And underneath that, there is a, um, another four millimeter Allen key nut that you have to loosen and remove. And once you've got that off, then you can um, take your valve housing out so that you can work on it. It is a little bit tricky getting it out. Um, I've, I've found mine to be quite stubborn, so I find it easier to um, actually screw the plenum, like carefully screw the plenum and the tube back on. So obviously we're leaving those nuts, those little bolts in there again, because there's two long ones at the back and two short ones at the front. So we'll put him upside down over here so it doesn't come out. And now we have access to the retention nut there, as you can see, and we'll pop him out with our big Allen key. A little bit of tension on that one, but not too bad. Now this grub screw is a different size to the other one, so we'll just put him next to it. And carefully put the plenum back into the valve housing. Make sure that the little end of it sits home nicely. You don't want to push that into anything that it shouldn't be pushed into. Screw it back on a little bit. This just gives you a little bit of extra leverage to, to get it out because it has to be very, very finely, like super fine tolerances to get this to work. So carefully pull it straight back out. And don't be too shocked if you um, end up sort of cooking a few O-rings here because I can see here mine has a, uh, one of my O-rings here has been snipped as it's, as it's passed over that hard edge of the, of the block. So that's all right. We've got extra O-rings to replace it with, so that's not the end of the world. And once you've got it to this stage, you can then simply unscrew it again. And then you have your pieces all nice and separated. Like so. And there you have it. Disassembled as far as we need to go. So there you have it. The gun in exploded view. Hopefully this demystifies the impact a little bit because everyone always seems to love freaking out about how complex it is and how many O-rings there are. And there are a lot of O-rings in it. There's like 40 O-rings in it. But you can just get yourself a... Uh, a nice little rebuild kit like that one there um, and you have everything on hand straight away so it's not as difficult as everyone says it is um, and it's it makes a lot of sense once you get it apart and once you put it back together again it's it's really not that difficult so check out um, Ernest Rose videos to double check your work as you're doing it um, he's the man to to watch so yeah so at this stage of full disassembly Basically, if you are installing the standard um, FX branded uh, power plenum kit, you would just replace, remove, say, you, you comes with the, the new plenum, the new internal spring and rod and everything else that you're going to put down into your new gun. You would just put all of the things that you've taken off now aside and then put the new ones in and then you would reassemble your gun. So... Not, not super difficult, very, very simple job to do. So let's pause for a minute and talk about why I've gone for Vladan's plenum and not for the FX plenum. So the standard plenum on an Impact Mark I, I believe is 20 cc's, and the plenum on a Mark II is 25. Um, and that little 5 cc jump is quite significant. You can make a lot more power with a Mark II than you can with a Mark I. Um, but if you upgrade to the FX Power Plenum, uh, that one is 54 cc's, so just a little bit bigger than twice as big as the um, standard Mark II Impact Plenum. Um, and that's a big power jump, um, and that's it's good, but it's not as good as it could be. So um, if you are just looking to shoot... Um, 
like reasonably heavy slugs, you're going to be fine with the FX Power Plenum. But if you're looking to push the envelope a little bit, uh, and you want to really go as hard as you can, um, you're going to need something bigger than the FX Plenum. So you'll need an external plenum. Um, and Vladan's external plenums, um, uh, the, the big one, the big aluminium one, is a 63cc plenum. So it's, it's bigger than the FX plenum is for a start, but you also get your old plenum volume as well. So it's 60, 63ccs plus the 20 or 25 that you had before. Um, and the titanium one that I'm putting on mine is a 48cc uh, plenum. So it's 48 plus 25. So it's, um, it's considerably bigger and gives you the opportunity to make quite a bit more power. So if you are a bit of a power junkie and you want to shoot really heavy slugs, um, it's a much better idea to go with an external plenum than an inline plenum, just because you get the benefits of that plenum upgrade as well as your old plenum, so you're not really wasting any space. It's wonderful. Um, it's also good to, um, I think it's a good idea to, to support small manufacturers, and I think FX does a pretty good job of that. You can see how they've gone with um, the side shot magazines and the, um, the Donny FL, um, and even with the ammunition that they're making now with the hybrid slugs, it's good to see that they're um, supporting the people who are enthusiastic about making stuff, and I hope they, um, they do the same or something similar with uh, external plenums as well for serious power junkies. It's a bit of a boutique upgrade and it's not for everybody, but yeah, it is, uh, it's going to be pretty cool once it's all finished. Time to move on to modifying my valve housing. Um, if you order the kit, um, you can just order one that's already modified um, because you, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, but if you are fitting an external plenum, you need to get one in the kit with the bottom bar removed. Um, and I didn't get one, I didn't get a Mark II one because I've already got my standard Mark II one here. So I'm just gonna modify mine. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that bar off the bottom and um, bevel the edges around it and sand it and so it's nice and, nice and smooth and there's no sharp edges and there's no burrs floating around in it. And uh, yeah, then it'll be, onwards to just replace a couple of o-rings that I've, I've sort of snipped on the way out and, um, and then we're all good. Put it all back together and go and test fire it. So to modify my valve housing I'm going to be using a Dremel 200. Um, just a cheap Dremel that you can get from your local hardware. No biggie there. Um, it's a two-speed but I haven't used it on this type of material before so I've got myself a piece of um, steel tube that I can have a practice on um, just to make sure that I know how it's going to react when I, um, when I touch it to the, uh, the steel of the valve housing. So here we are, as you can see I'm all taped off. Um, I put the tape a couple of millimetres further in than I needed to. So just to give me a little bit more material to work with. Um, with a job like this, it's always important to remember that you can remove stuff, but you can't put it back on. So um, I'm gonna be fairly conservative with where I've, where I've left my marks. Um, if you have a look in there, you can see there's a fair bit of meat between um, where the uh, valve seat is and where I'm cutting. And same on the other side, there's um, quite a bit of juice left behind. You don't have to be right up on it. You can if you want, if you're uh, super duper handy and you're, you're very practiced, but uh, I'm not gonna be running any risks. So I'm just gonna um, remove the bulk of the bar and then uh, round off all the edges, making sure that I don't scratch up anything that I don't need to. So that's the most technical part of it done. Bottom bar removed. Um, now all I have to do is get in there and uh, smooth out those edges. So I've got another little tool for that. So we'll get in there and do a bit of polishing. Right, so low power on the little 
polishing nib. Let's see how we go. So that came up very nice. Um, just a quick grind off with the cutting wheel to remove the bulk of it and then uh, a quick little buzz with the um, sanding stone thingy. Uh, I do actually have some little sanding wheels of sandpaper but because it's come up so good already I think I'm just going to step out uh, all the way into um, the sort of wet and dry type polishing sandpaper and then just give it a quick polish make sure everything's uh, as smooth as it can be and then call it good. That little Dremel's wicked, eh? Pretty happy with that. Smooth, wonderful, I like it. Might spray it down with some goo. Right, so that's all cut up. Very good. Just gotta make sure you um, have a good close look inside it. Get all of the uh, particles out. We don't want any swarf floating around inside our gun. Roll up the old rag, get it all the way in there. Make sure I get everything out. Um, I took these two O-rings off the back uh, because I scratched them up when I pulled it through the block. Um, something important to know, you should always lube up your um, O-rings with some sort of silicone grease. Um, I'll be doing that on the way back in, but it hasn't been apart for a good long while, so it's, it kind of dried up a little bit in there with the amount of shooting that I do, so it is what it is. Um, have some spare O-rings on hand. Uh, I have a O-ring rebuild kit from Bagnall and Kirkwood over in the UK, and it's handy to have all of them together like that, but it would be much cooler if they were labelled, just saying. Um, but yeah, anyway. You can just measure them, and um, that's what I've done. It was the B29 O-ring, uh, which is a little different from the um, the ones that you'll see on my Word document if you go into my Google Drive and download the O-ring schematic that's on there. You're more than welcome to have that. Um, but whatever O-rings that you have to uh, replace, just measure them, measure the broken ones, and then measure the new ones, make sure they're the same thing, and uh, Robert's your father's brother. So. A little bit of goo, lube them up a little bit, and slide them back on, and we'll be, uh, we're in business. It doesn't take a huge amount. Just a little bit on the old fingers. This is how Ernest keeps his, uh, his skin so healthy. <laughs> Here we go. Now I'm just gonna put a little bit more on the rest of it so that it slides in nicely. Don't end up snagging any O-rings on the way back in. It really is only the O-ring parts that will give you any dramas as far as um, getting it over the little bumps and humps inside the block. Alright, now we're good to reassemble. So let's start where we finished and go from there. So valve housing, gently, gently, a little bit of a wiggle here and there. Um, you'll notice there's a dovetailed flat bit. That's the bottom. So line up the bottom as best you can and push it through. A little bit easier this time. There we go. Seated home nicely. Didn't feel like I chopped any O-rings up. Um, putting this uh, big grub screw back in, this is what sort of locates the, uh, the valve housing. So get it as close as you can um, before you put it in there and then put the grub screw in. Big one, four millimeter. A little bit of uh, anti-clockwise until you feel it click over and then screw him in. And as you tighten it up, if it's a little bit skew if you'll see that this will actually level itself out as you put pressure on the grub screw. Mine didn't move much, so looks like I've got him lined up nicely. Sweet. Alright, now, this bit. 
pop him back on. Upside down is the easy way to go. A little bit anti-clockwise until you hear it click. Start the thread and then move on to the next one. Don't do them all up super tight straight away. We want to get them all started before we start cranking down on anything. And here we go. So they're all started now. I like to do a bit of a star pattern. Makes everything seat in there nicely. Now that we have the uh, rear block all installed, looking good. Grub screw snugged in and everything. It's power plenum time. Look at that. Oh, so nice. This is the titanium one. So there's not a great deal to it. You put your block upside down like that. Take the o-ring out little bit of the good stuff just to make sure and that just goes straight in and sits nicely in the hole pop the uh, white ring on there and there's already an o-ring on the uh, on the thread there a little bit of anti-clockwise until it clicks in there we go spin him on Got to be careful not to go too hard on this. <laughs> hand tight for me is pretty tight, so just hand tight, but don't snap anything. Lovely. Excellent. Oh, I'm excited. So there's also an O-ring inside the plenum there for the gauge. So I put my gauge over here. Now you can use a, a little bit of Teflon tape here as well. It's never a bad idea. I'm just going to give this the tiniest little bit of pressure with my big shifter. And when I say the tiniest bit, I mean the tiniest bit. So that was just using the weight of the shifter to move it. I wasn't cranking on it or anything. But that's leveled us up nicely. We have a, a gauge, we have an external plenum. We're in business, boys. And girl, I guess, if you're out there. <laughs> Old school plenum. Pop him back in. Keep an eye on the back of the valve housing. Make sure that you're the end of the valve stem seats in the middle. Hopefully you can see that. Mine's gone in there nicely. Hand tight on that one as well. Carefully feed your two main pieces back together. Give it a little bit of a jiggle. Just to get it over those two O-rings. There we go. And now we're just going to uh, take the slack out of this, this bolt here. Still going to have to um, tighten it up again later. But for now, it's just enough to just to keep it all together. We don't we don't want to crank down on that one just yet, because as you can see, it won't be lined up. Next, we've got spring, weight, and hammer. It goes in there like that. Check it on the top. You can see through the, the window at the top there that it's all seated correctly. So to make things easier on ourselves, we'll put the pellet probe assembly back in. Line up the cocking handle with the little steel piece that it sits in. Put the top plate back on. This top plate, we want to do the old start everything off get each little thread seated and then give it a couple of turns but don't snug them down a little bit anti-clockwise to hear the click and then give it a couple all right so all of them are started now and what i'm going to do is star pattern sort of the same thing you would do if you were putting a tire back on a car because this plate 
aligns everything you want to sort of go across and back starting somewhere near the middle and working your way out now that that's done we can go back and tighten our plenum retention nut down here snug it down a bit don't go crazy just snug it down she ain't going nowhere next back onto everybody's favorite piece the valve stem Delrin C3 O-ring, Poppy Morn, lovely, very good. I'm just going to carefully lay this down. So this is blue Loctite, it's uh, removable, wouldn't recommend using red Loctite because you might never ever get it off. <laughs> Teensy weensy one. Pop your valve bumper back together. 11 mil. This really doesn't take much at all. Once it's seated, it just seats there nicely. And then your little bumper. Screw it back on. In my case, I'm going to be tuning after this, so I'm leaving all four lines visible. Barrel back on. I like to put the barrel in a little bit off center and then spin it around and watch it click in just so that I know I've seated it properly. Grub screw, three mil. All right, next, optics rail. Same as before, get all three of them started, but don't snug them down. Once you've got a couple of threads on each one, roll them all the way in. Cheap piece, fairly self-explanatory by now. Last but not least, gas her up. So once you're done with the install, all you really have to do is uh, pressure up your gun and do a bit of a leak test. So um, make a note of whatever pressure you leave at. I'm going to pump mine all the way up to 250 bar and um, check it out the next day and see if it loses any pressure overnight. Um, if it does lose pressure, you've probably uh, missed an O-ring somewhere or you've, um, yeah, I don't know, something's not tight, gauge might be loose anything like that so you just have to go for some troubleshooting from there get yourself some leak detection fluid a little bit of uh, detergent in some water and a little squirt squirt gun squirt squirt see where the bubbles come out and uh, yeah fix as you go so it probably shouldn't be any real dramas with that um, unless you had issues before you started this install but um, yeah mine wasn't leaking before so I don't expect it to be leaking now and um, yeah 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 so i reckon that's that um stick around we're going to uh tune it next um because i just have to know what i can get out of it um i'm probably going to go for a pretty mild tune probably around that sort of somewhere between 900 and 930 again because i still want to be able to use my lower power settings um and if i can't get slow enough speeds because remember we're running like 84 cc's of plenum now um, i'll have to probably get a shorter hammer spring so if you are wanting to run um, a big plenum like this one to shoot big heavy slugs in the future remember that 35 cal is coming out real soon so um, that's going to be fun 
shooting big heavy long 35 caliber slugs is going to be great um, but more importantly for uh, my toad control problems that I have around the house um, I want to be able to shoot uh, really slow as well um, and not risk over penetration and you know noise all that jazz so um, if if it comes to it that I can't get uh, super slow speeds as well um, yeah I'll be downgrading my hammer spring a little bit and then when I need the power I can uh, either put the bigger one in or tune that particular hammer spring up with a weight whatever works we'll cross that bridge when we come to it but uh, yeah for now that's it bye